owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Black Friday. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, and for today's video, I did manage to get a few projects done that I've had hanging out in my kitchen for a while. Uh, I finished up two signs and some ornaments that I wanted to get finished. So I hope you like the projects that I got done for today. And I hope you enjoy the video. And without further ado, let's get to them. My first project are these two boards that I've had for quite a while. I painted them probably last spring and then they've just been sitting in my kitchen ever since. So I thought it was time to do something with them and maybe make some cute Christmas signs with them. So the first thing I did was wash up the black one and get it ready for stenciling. And then I cut out the piece of stencil that I needed, laid it down on my cutting mat and got it going in my Cricut machine. For this one, I am cutting out the words, let it snow and I am leaving out the O. So once it was done in the Cricut, I pulled it out and weeded it, added some transfer tape, peeled that back, and then placed my stencil onto the board very carefully, making sure that it was centered and exactly where I needed it. Then I peeled back that transfer tape, made sure it was down really well on the board, and began the stenciling process. For the color, I'm using DIY's crinoline, and I am applying it with a makeup sponge I got at the Dollar Tree, just using a gentle tapping motion to apply my paint, going over it with two good even coats, being careful, especially on the first coat, to not apply too much paint at a time. Then it's time to peel off my stencil vinyl and then weed out all of the little bits and pieces that were left behind and then move on to sealing my board. For this, I used a spray sealer. I believe it's just a clear matte Rust-Oleum spray. I prefer spray for this because of the fact that I don't have to worry about accidentally reactivating my stencil and smudging it, which I've had happen in the past and is really no fun. Then once I get a good coat front and back on that board, it's time to move on to the next part of this which is using these beautiful molds to create some castings. I'm using Snowflake Jewels and Wonder Gems. Unfortunately, both of these are sold out through Redesign and on my website as well. I apologize for that. Uh, but I'm using the Amazing Casting Resin. It's a two-part resin. You just mix it in equal parts, stir it really well, and then pour it into your mold. Now, a couple of things I've learned about making castings. Number one, only mix up as much resin as you think you're going to need. And number two, make sure you're pouring on a very level surface. I actually had to order myself a leveling table from Amazon because I don't seem to have a level surface to save my life in this whole entire shop. Anyway, once my castings had set up, I pulled them out of the molds and then painted them with one good even coat of DIY's crinoline so they would match the wording on the uh, sign. And then I sealed them with DIY's clear wax, uh, just kind of going over each of the castings with the clear wax and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel. And once that was done, I decided I really needed to bring more of that detail out. And for that, I used some dark wax so I just used a small brush and kind of worked it down into all the detail and then rubbed really well the excess off of the top of the molds just to make it look a little bit more uh, kind of aged and just really like I said make that detail shine through. I wanted to add a little bit of glimmer and glam to these so I went over them first with a dry brushing technique and a little bit of the liquid patina called golden ticket and then I used a little bit of the gold gilding wax called golden rule and with my finger just applied that to all of the raised areas on these snowflakes. I wish the shimmer and shine would show up a little bit better in the video so you guys could really see it. These are so lovely in person though. Once they were done, it was time to figure out exactly how I wanted to lay them out. So I just kind of put them on my sign. And once I was happy with my placement, I added a little thin layer of tight bond quick and thick to the back of each one, spreading it in a thin layer with my fingers and then carefully placing it onto the board and pushing it down. 
I'm so happy to have finally done something with this board and I love how it came out. The other board was a pretty color. I believe it's apothecary, but it really doesn't go with my Christmas decor. So I went ahead and painted over it. For that, I decided to go with DIY's crinoline for my base coat and just kind of make this sign the opposite in color from the other one. So I'm going to be stenciling it using a little black dress. So once I get two good even coats of the DIY's crinoline paint on both sides, of this board it's time to move on to creating my stencil for this one I am creating a stencil that simply says Merry Christmas and so again I just start by cutting out my piece of vinyl running it through my Cricut and then weeding out uh, the the letters and once I have that done it's time to add a little bit of transfer tape to the back peel the transfer tape backing off and then place my stencil Pencil down onto my board. For this, I'm just very careful to make sure it's centered and straight on the board. Then I lay it down, rub it down with my hands, and peel that transfer tape back off of the stencil. Then it's on to the actual stenciling process. And again, I'm just using a simple makeup sponge for this and DIY's little black dress for the stencil. I did go over it with two good even coats of paint. Uh, there were places where I didn't even need to really touch it up the second time around but I did just to make sure that everything was well covered. Once I had my stenciling part done, it was time again to peel up that vinyl. And so I slowly, carefully just peeled back the stencil vinyl while the paint was still just a little bit wet. And then once I had the bulk of it off, I went through with my little weeding tool and picked out all of the little pieces that were left behind inside some of the letters. Once that was all done, again, I had to seal this, and so I just used that same uh, Rust-Oleum clear matte spray and went over both sides of this board with one good even coat of that spray. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been going through a little bit of a black and gold phase, and this sign is no exception. So I went ahead and painted these beautiful little ornament castings using little black dress, and then I dry brushed on some golden ticket liquid patina just to give them a little bit of glimmer. And then to really make the detail shine, I went over the uh, raised areas with some golden rule a gilding wax and my fingertip so just using my finger to apply that golden rule wax and boy <laughs> did these ornaments really really shine once I was done with that now the last step here of course is to adhere my little uh, ornaments to my sign and again just using a thin layer of the tight bond quick and thick on the back of each one of them placing them on the board and then pressing down gently to make sure that they're well adhered. I absolutely love this sign too. I can't decide which of them is my favorite. My third and final project is one that I have been working on for a while now. I actually painted these guys probably 
two or three weeks ago, and then they've just been sitting around waiting for me to get back to them. So these little mushrooms, they're just wooden mushrooms I found on Amazon. I got a couple sets of them, and I had seen an idea on Pinterest that I wanted to try and mimic myself. So I started by giving these guys each two good even coats of DIYs crinoline, and then I sealed all of them with one good even coat of Big Top. Now the next step is gold leafing and I have to tell you I tried gold leafing with some different glues and it was really really time consuming and very difficult so one of the reasons that this project took me a little while is I went ahead and ordered the proper glue for gold leafing which is this little jar of glue called size and gosh, this made the job way easier. <laughs> so the instructions are to just paint the glue on and then wait approximately 30 minutes for it to be tacky. And then you can apply your gold leaf, which I did. And wow, what a concept. It worked really, really well. So I started by using my brush to kind of tap the gold leaf into place. After a little while, honestly, I dropped the brush and just went with my finger to Tips seem to be a lot easier uh, to mold the gold leafing into places and just uh, kind of remove any excess. And I, just, I don't know, this just seemed like a lot easier of a uh, way to do this than trying to mess around with the brush. This was definitely a bit of a time consuming process and it took several minutes to get all of the gold leaf onto all of these little mushrooms, but they were so pretty when I was. to seal your gold leafing and I thought I would use Big Top for this and I have to say the first uh, coat of Big Top I laid down there was quite a bit of resist from the gold leafing so I let it dry and then went over them again with a second coat and the second coat stuck really well. It dried clear and it looked great when it was done. Then it was time to put in my little eyelets so I used my Cricut tool to poke a hole so that I could get the eyelets started and then with a little pair of tweezers, I uh, very carefully screwed the eyelets in. Lastly, it's time to decorate my little mushrooms. And I am again trying to do what I saw on Pinterest here, which was use some moss. They use real flowers for theirs, but I had this baby's breath uh, that I got off of Amazon that I thought would be a perfect candidate for these. So I attached some moss to the top of each one of the mushrooms with some hot glue and then attached some of those cute little white flowers to just give them a little bit of pizzazz and make them look a little bit cottage core and gardeny. I think they turned out really, really well. Honestly, I probably would not do these again just because of the amount of time each mushroom took, but I have to say they are super cute.
projects for today. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you have a favorite, please comment below and let me know what it is. Uh, and if you're new here or you haven't already, I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel. Uh, Tuesday's video, I'm really not sure exactly what I'm doing for that yet. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. I have a dresser project that I'm going to be starting. Um, she's very, very broken and very, very uh, in need of some real help. And so I might take you along on the beginning process of that, kind of where I found her, where she's at now, and uh, some of the things that I'm going to need to do to her to get her literally back on her feet. She's missing a leg. So uh, that might be part of Tuesday's video. So I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, and I just wanted to apologize to any of you who've been on my website today on Black Friday and not been able to figure out my sale. Uh, I've been having some website issues and I um, am waiting still for uh, tech support to get back to me uh, with some resolution. And so for now, um, I'm just kind of stuck. I'm hoping to get the issue resolved soon though, so that you can uh, shop to your heart's content on with from my Redesign with Prima uh, Black Friday sale. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully it'll be all fixed soon. Anyway, uh, and also don't forget that uh, the DIY products you saw me use in today's video can be purchased also through my website. And that is www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. I also have a full line of Sweet Pickens milk paint as well as some recycled decoupage papers. Anyway, I hope you guys will join me back here for Tuesday's video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and thank you so much for being here. Bye.